Hello friends, welcome, welcome back. We have electricity. Yay! 40 Fit Foo, episode 46? Yes. 46. My name is Oscar. I'm Mimi. <laughs> you like that? Prompted. Um, last week we talked about flexibility for Kung Fu and we were talking about people trying to get into splits, split position, kind of that V stretch. Um, not my strong suit. I would I would not call that my strong suit at all. But um, we thought we'd tackle a little bit of the upper body today. So in Kung Fu, there is, and in Wallam Kung Fu especially, like our normal style, we've got some mantis techniques. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of movements where we have to get a straight arm overhead. Not just overhead, but also the opposite arm kind right. of sweeping across the body, right. both sides. We've got weapons that are kind of flying all over the place. So we want to be able to have a good range of motion with not just, I guess when you say T-spine, you mean like this. Yeah. Does that also, you know, cover the shoulders? Yeah, so, and then also... So we want to have good mobility. Good mobility, and I think the biggest culprit of uh, causing people to, to get issues is flowering the oh well, yeah flowering the broadsword because it requires a lot of internal rotation of the shoulder right getting the hand in this position which a lot of people don't have because yes we're on phones we're on laptops we actually did a special flowering edition of Fourth Street <laughs> Food so you can go back to our YouTube channel and all them films and watch because we were flowering all sorts of weapons and that one was a lot of fun. Correct, correct. So when we think of approaching mobility for the upper body, a lot of people think, well, my shoulders are really tight or I feel pain in my shoulder or my elbow or my, or my wrist, right? They have to think of having issues there. So the way we like to think about it at Wallum and also with Control Your Health is we attack it from the center of your spine. If you think of like your spine broken into three sections, we have our lumbar, our low back. We've got our mid to upper back, kind of the thoracic spine. And we have our cervical spine. If you have very tight hips and you're trying to request movement from your, from your body, doing certain things, and, and your hips are, are not loose enough, you're going to get rotation here where we do, we shouldn't get too much rotation in the low back. We should get rotation from the area. For women, think about it, um, you know, around the area of the ribs. I guess for women and men, around the area of the ribs and up to here, there should be a lot of movement here. You should be able to like extend, flex, rotate. There should be a lot of things that, that should happen there. And if this is very tight, right, then the shoulder blades are not going to move the way they're meant to be. And if the shoulder blades don't move the way they're meant to be, the shoulders themselves are not going to move the way that they're meant to be. So again, this is why sometimes when someone has a shoulder issue, we think of, well, let's address their thoracic spine and address it with a little rotation first and see what that looks like. So let's go over maybe a thoracic spine stretch. Um, there's multiple ways to do this. And so one of the ways that is kind of easy requires no equipment is if you get yourself in a child's pose, I guess I can make you do it right since you've got pretty good mobility, but if you get yourself in a child's pose, which is butt on the heels, and then hands kind of like, let's put them in a, almost like a prayer position. So your hands touching, elbows touching to, hip can come off the floor. Elbows touching to, yeah, good. And now that's just so that we know where we're gonna place the, the down arm. So one hand will go behind your head, like you're touching your head. There, yeah. The other hand will come here. And this is your nice, strong base of support. If your butt is back and your hips are on your heels, we've locked the low back. So now as I ask Mimi to rotate here, she's gonna... I have a question. Yeah. What if your butt can't reach your heels? Then we have tools for that. We start off with something like that. Oh, it's there. And then I have some people who've had knee issues, like as far as, um, really don't have any knee flexion capability. So we need to address that obviously over time. But since, since we're talking about this, you know, something like a foam roller, a rolled up towel, now she can put pressure with her hips on her feet. Hand is now behind the head. 
And this is externally rotating the shoulder, right? And then getting thoracic mobility. So let's have you turn and look up and hold this and look up and exhale. Now come back down. You don't need this though because you've got... Oh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's for our viewers. Yeah. So um, try it again, maybe your other side, so you can see. And what I like to coach people to do is to take an inhale at the bottom, exhale, keep rotating, keep rotating. And if you see, she's got pretty good mobility. I'm gonna give her a little bit more, but even this can improve because we spend a lot of time sitting down, even as Kung Fu instructors. Yeah, so that's one way. You can come up off. I have a question. So if they're rotating, you don't want that. Yeah, part. so if you've got a friend and a partner, um, this is, again, maybe... Or a random if, person on the street. Right, um, uh, someone who can kind of help guide you. So you'll notice that I don't have as good mobility as, as Mimi does if I, if I were to do it. So if I'm here in this position, my butt can touch my, my heels, got it. Check. Starting my prayer position, good. Check. And I'm gonna do um, my easier side first that I know. That's pretty good actually. I think it's better than mine. So what you notice is I hit kind of my stopping point. I take a breath there and I exhale and I may or may not get more mobility, but you have to kind of hang out in a place that you can breathe. If you force yourself too fast and you're like, you can't take a breath, you want to back away from there. It's kind of like what we talked about last week if you joined us where we were just like, no, no, just kind of like yeah. hang out, like feel where you're at, breathe into it, breathe into it more, right. and move, you know? Right, so this is, um, think of this for all mobility drills is you want to be able to, with intention, get into a certain position. Can you thrive? Can you live there? What's, how do you know that? If you could take a deep breath. If you can't, you're not gonna, your nervous system is not gonna allow you to, to relax and allow you to move, move that tissue. Then the thing is, um, can you put force into that? And there's, other, there's different ways to do that, but here, the way I, I like for you guys to think about it is, once you get to that position, keep exhaling, and driving and driving and trying to push as long as you can breathe, as long as you're not getting a lot of tension in the neck and the face where you're wow. or sharp pain. Or sharp pain, right? I always stop if there's any pain. Um, but sometimes hanging out and breathing and a little bit of oscillating back and forth can kind of clear that up. And um, foam rolling, which we did an episode on foam rolling, if we were to do this uh, thoracic mobility stretch, for some people, um, five minutes later, we may get some movement but if they spend a few minutes beforehand on foam rolling, it could save them time when it, when it comes to the actual mobility drill. So that is one out of many thoracic mobility drills. I can keep going. Well, I think we can do um, maybe right after we do this. Like mm -hmm. How many repetitions should we do? How many times should we do it? How long okay. should they spend on this? Okay, what actually, should they start to feel? Right, so, okay, so let's do, think about a test that we could do. And maybe, again, because I know that your mobility is pretty good, you can demonstrate this. So if you face this way again, and let's have you make a bad fist only, right now as I'm asking you to do a bad fist, thumbs on the inside, um, turn your face so they see you kind of, well, they see your back, yeah. And you're going to reach behind you. But you can get into the knee position if you want, whatever you're more comfortable with. So I'm just gonna ask Mimi to make a bad fist, and then it's so see hard to do how closely fist. along her back she can get her fists. Less, way less than the hands. Now let's have the other side. Now, for some people, you may be like, you know what, it's a little tighter. But visually, it's very minimal, right? You're right-handed, so I'm assuming that your right shoulder feels a little tighter. She's inside my hand length, which is, let's give that the green light. She's good to go for upper body stuff. Now you're gonna see mine. So, <laughs> here I am, showing you my vulnerable side. Okay, so <laughs> if we're here, I always like to demo my good side because it's kind of good to see um, the difference from good to bad, right? So here's my fist, and am I inside your hand length? Mm, not exactly. It's but, close. It's close. Yeah. If you count only my index finger. From the two closest points yeah. of my 
the closest point here mm -hmm. to the closest point there. Yeah. Right? Now you are. So there you go. Right? That's my, this is my good side with my left arm back, right? I have better up here. Now you'll notice the difference from my other side. And I'm trying not to force it, right? I'm just trying to, I'm trying to kind of just see where, I, I don't want it this. Right? If, I, if I reset myself again. It should just be where, where you first stop, right? Like where correct. it stops. You shouldn't be wiggling into it. Right. So now you see, you can probably all see, is it about a hand and a half? Yeah. Right? So a hand and a half, we're giving it the red light, green light, yellow light, is about a yellow light. <laughs> right? If it's more than a hand and a half, I would give that the red light. So we know that my right shoulder has some issues. Um, we can do a real life test right now while you talk and I can do this thoracic mobility stretch mm -hmm. for like two minutes and then retest it. I don't know if you want to do that. But, <laughs> but, but anyway, so what I'm saying is this is the test. Then I would do some breathing drills. See have my, if I can get some thoracic rotation. Then I would retest. If I see a change, then I know I'm doing the right thing. And then what's gonna happen is like, wow, I do that before I have to flower with my rocks or it's gonna help do that. But it's because I've cleared that yellow, okay, it's passable, but we should do a little bit better. So, or green light for you. But if you were red light, then I'd be like, you know what, sorry. You shouldn't be doing flowers with your bro with your rocks or you probably shouldn't be taking a weapon and putting it over your head. And this is also probably why when you do even basic hand forms, you can't get into this position. So like visually, if you can see, this is my right side, I can get pretty straight, but it feels a little bit restricted. My left side, probably visually you can't see the difference, but I can feel the difference, right? And so um, body weight, okay, no problem, I'm not gonna hurt myself. Um, but then I start adding a weight and adding momentum, then I can hurt myself. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, I would say that this is probably one of the things people stretch the least. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, let's take me as culprit numero uno. Um, is um, for years, I've known that I've had a tight right shoulder. And I know that one way to make that better is by getting thoracic mobility. But, you know, sometimes you, you don't even listen to the stuff that you know you should do, right? This is stuff <laughs> that I tell other people to do. Um, and recently, even what you saw there, it's a hand and a half, it was big, it was bit more than that. And so I've kind of been working on that over the past month. And even though visually you don't see a huge difference, I personally feel a lot better and my shoulders feel a lot healthier. So, um, and so pretty much the main reason also is pretty much to prevent injury. Yeah, I mean, listen, number one, when you do anything, unless you're, you're at 40 foot and you're watching because you're, you like Kung Fu or you're, you like doing some kind of activity. Or you just really like us. Yeah, or you're like, man, you know, Oscar and me are like, the most awesome people <laughs> ever, right? So like, let's say you're one of those people. Um, you're doing some kind of activity. You should, your number one priority for that activity, and this is the way I approach for my control your health people, is that you should um, not get injured doing the activity that you love. Mm -hmm. You should be doing something which does not cause you harm while you're, you're doing it. Then number two is you should work, be working on getting better and preventing injuries in the future. Mm -hmm. And then number three is you should be having fun, getting stronger, doing all the stuff that you love to do. But number one has to be that you don't hurt yourself in the stuff that you, that you love to do. And we get some people, unfortunately, who don't listen to our advice and kind of move certain things, you know, do the prioritize things that they need to do. And so they hurt themselves doing stuff that they love. And that's a damn shame. Yeah, because then you don't get to do the stuff you love and it's not fun. And listen, I'm speaking, for, my, I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times over the course of like 20 years of doing Kung Fu that I've hurt my shoulder. The same one. <laughs> over and over. So, but Learn at, from us. At the end of the day also, it is good to check with your instructor, but also specifically on Oscar's side with the Control Your Health, you do FMS screenings. Yeah. You do specific, That's all functional movement screenings. You do specific screenings in order to make sure like, should I be moving in this pattern? Um, so if we're not in Orlando, sorry, you know, there is an FMS you can yeah, go to and find up local movement. because actually right. it's a good test for you to make sure that you are going to be safe. If you wonder why you're always having pain, something's not moving correctly. And there's actually corrective exercises that can help you with this. You don't even have to go to the doctor for those parts unless yep. it's 
major pain, but basically this screen can kind of help eliminate a lot of future problems. Um, so if you are in Orlando, I will plug you real quick. Uh, you can come and see Oscar over at CYH because he is a functional movement screen guy and um, it's, a, it's a pretty quick test and it's actually really insightful. So I've done it, yeah. done it for all the demo kits and everything. And so, you know, the cool thing with that is, is the number one thing that it's meant to do is screen out pain. So if I were to do this and go, oh, oh that hurts, I probably, that's where I kind of say, well, listen, I'm not a physical therapist or I'm not a doctor, so let's get that checked out. Let's get that cleared by a professional, uh, a physician, medical. a medical professional. In the meantime, you, I've got a red light on certain movements. That doesn't mean we can, we can still train a ton of other stuff though, but I got a red light on that until we get that cleared. If you were to do that and it's just completely not moving the way it should, but there's no pain, awesome. We can work with that because we know things that, that we can do to kind of move you in that direction. The thing is that um, it won't happen on its own. You have to put in the work. So if you if you commit to it and do the work in it, just like anything else, you'll, you'll succeed. Yeah. All right, I think that's good. So thoracic spine, mobility, that's one of many more I mean, mobility yeah. i know guys but it is what it is this is actually what's really good for us and um if anybody's ever felt any kind of anything in this area that's probably a good reason here's the last thing i'll leave you with because you asked like okay how, how do we prioritize prioritize and execute baby so so i let's say we've determined oh we got a shoulder issue thing there okay i would say get on your back and do some breathing get that sympathetic system to go down do some thoracic spine work to target that area, which also leads to some breathing and also getting your sympathetic tone down. Then, if you had a guess, shoulder cars get the shoulder moving to then kind of cement that pattern. Like, oh, my shoulder is now healthy and I can do a full shoulder controlled articular rotation without pain. And then on top of that, the icing, And but the last thing is now I'm gonna do my move, my kung fu move, my block or my broadsword flower or my stick form. And that's how I would order it um, in, as far as priority. In class, you may not be able to do that, but you sure as hell can do it at home. All right. Thanks for joining us every Tuesday, 7.45, Boise Fit Foo right here. If you have questions, leave them for us. We love questions. I do. Because uh, Oscar has all the answers. I don't have all the answers, <laughs> but I love questions. All right. So keep following us and uh, turn on notifications. Thank you. See you next week. Bye.